Psalm 139, uh, in relation to uh, Revelation 10. Let me read Revelation 10 real quick uh, to get back on track, talking about something that's important. Um, Revelation chapter 10, the book being opened. Um, and this, let, let me just throw this your way as well. There's something I know, I, I, and I haven't got to yet on teaching about the DNA book that we have. That, uh, but something I know that takes place, uh, well, every single day that we're alive. But it has to do with our DNA and that what, what our DNA does as far as maintain our body is concerned is that every day in, in millions of your cells, the DNA, the rolled up DNA is unrolled and the hydrogen bonds are broken. And so you have just a strand of RNA and it's called messenger RNA. And that we'll talk about that later. Uh, but that's how the body uh, can make uh, parts of your body, can make the fluids that you need or the cells that you need and so on. That's how the body does it. And so I know that when I see a book being opened, like in Luke chapter 4, when Jesus had been in the wilderness 40 days uh, and, he came, and he came through that, and he goes to the synagogue and it's his, you know, his tradition for him to take the book and read. When he took the book, he opened the book. Uh, and that is a picture of Revelation uh, chapter 5 of Christ taking the book from God's hand, opening the book and so on. I know that, that as long as the book is closed, nothing can be done. And I want you to ponder that part for a while. You're wanting God to act. You're wanting God to move. You're wanting answers from God. And you're always wanting a sign or a wonder. Well, why don't you open the book and let God show you the real answer from his word? And that I promise you, that's, that's where it is and that's how it works. So anytime the book is opened, uh, that book is going to do something that's beneficial to the body. Now, who in here believes that at some point within the very near future, scientists will be augmenting, changing, transforming human DNA? Absolutely. We're almost there. And once it's done, there's no going back. Yes, sir. Of course he is. I absolutely believe he's going to allow them to do that. And it's going to be for their own judgment. Yeah. He allowed, yeah, it's a good illustration. He allowed Pharaoh all the way down into right at their heels and he's thinking all along I'm gonna get them we're close we're close come on boys giddy up we're close and then all of a sudden wham the waters came down I believe God is going to allow man to do that it is going to be a man's own judgment against himself um, yeah the Tower of Babel let them build that tower okay and then I'm gonna confuse their languages you watch and see yep Yep. So is, this, is that what you think like, is going to happen? They're going to mess with their DNA and then nobody will die. I think that's part of it. I do. Uh, there's, they're in so much torment that they want to die, but then for five months, no one dies. That's unheard of. Okay? So anyway, when the book is opened, that's when uh, things can be copied. Of, from your DNA, it's called um, uh, RNA. Let's see, 
RNA, I gotta get my words right here. I wanna say RNA transmission, but that's not it. It's RNA transcription. Uh, and um, once it's transcripted, that means a perfect copy is made of a length of your DNA. And then, the, yeah, kill that wasp. And then the, the book is closed again. And once that RNA transcription is read, then it's go, called RNA translation. That means the, the code of the RNA is performed. It's done. It's like what Jesus said to Nicodemus. He gave him a, a, a small portion it's like what um, Philip showed to the Ethiopian eunuch. He didn't read the whole Bible to him. He just read part of Psalm or all of uh, Isaiah 53. He read Isaiah 53. The Ethiopian eunuch has that in his mind. Philip tells him what it means. Boom. Now he wants to get saved. Now he wants to follow Jesus. And uh, I'm sure after that then that that Ethiopian eunuch wanted to read more and more and more of the scriptures so that more and more and more of the scriptures could be done and worked inside of him. Uh, but also, there's a trap waiting. Is that when that book is opened, there is the possibility that something could be added to that that's not good and it's not really supposed to be there. That's called cancer and it's called maybe other diseases as well. Uh, and so when you see in Revelation 6 where Jesus is opening the seals, every time he opens the seal, We've got a white horse, we've got a, a red horse, we've got a black horse, we've got a pale horse, and so on. And these are basically, he's, he's loosening judgments upon the earth. All right. Um, yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's possible. Let me say this, okay? The, um, the, the COVID shot that these companies produced was unlike any other COVID shot before, okay? Um, when your body comes in contact with a foreign, let's say like a, be like a spy, a foreign agent, okay? That doesn't belong there. That foreign agent is captured, he's analyzed, the body makes a record of what this foreign agent looks like, makes a record of its DNA, make a, makes a record of what it can do and so on, and stores that. Uh, it's, it's sort of like when you get the mumps, if you get the mumps when you're a kid, do you ever have to worry about getting the mumps afterward? Nope. Why? Because your body captured the mumps, analyzed it, stored the data, and kept a record of it so that if you get around somebody later on with mumps again, your body already knows how to fight it off and you don't catch the mumps anymore. Okay? So your body is, is doing that automatically. It's like I said, the book is always in charge book does everything in our body okay now the uh, the wonderful scientist quote unquote decided that it could be better if they already made a copy of the the virus uh, basically a virus is a strand of RNA that's what it is it would be like it would be like if you were reading uh, John chapter 3 and after John 3 uh, 16 uh, that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life and then right after that it it said something that completely contradicts John 3 16 and you would think uh oh somebody added that in there and if you thought that and you knew that was correct, you would white it out and get rid of it. 
so that if anybody ever came to you and said, hey, did you know that right after John 3, 16, it says something? No, it doesn't. You're immune to that. You've, you've built an immunity to that, and that doesn't affect you anymore. But somebody who's never heard of it before, if they read John 3, 16, and then they read whatever is added after that, that contradicts that, well, then they're going to catch that disease. They're going to believe that both things are true. You, you follow what I'm saying here? Okay. That's how diseases work that are based upon um, viruses. And viruses basically are strings of RNA that don't belong in the body that are dangerous to the body. Which is why, like in this church, I would never allow anybody to stand up and say, I've got a revelation from God, and they reel it off to everybody, as soon as they sat down, I would say, uh, ladies and gentlemen, according to the word of God, what that man just said was a lie, and he is a liar, and I will not allow anything like that ever again to happen in this church. Say amen. Okay? Because... Part of my job as a white blood cell is to fight off and destroy false doctrines that make the body sick. Okay, that's my job. I don't like it sometimes, but I got to do it. So that's, that's a good question. But anyway, the, the, uh, the COVID vaccines themselves, what they did was once, once your body comes in contact with that COVID virus or whatever it is. It makes a record and stores the information from that record uh, and makes it part of your immune system. So that if you come in contact with COVID again, you either don't get any symptoms or the symptoms are quite less than they were. Your body's doing all the work, okay? Now here's what I don't like about the vaccines. What they did was they went ahead and made a record, an RNA record of what COVID does, what it looks like, and how to respond to it so that your body automatically kicks everything in gear as if you have been introduced to the COVID virus, okay? Now, let me say this, I don't believe that that is changing your DNA, because it's not. But it is doing something that I just don't want done, period, okay? I don't like it. Um, it doesn't, like I said, it, to my knowledge, it doesn't alter DNA. It's just like... Uh, if Chris, let's say you had to take a test where you used to work and the first time you took it, you bombed the test. Okay. Got an F on it. Well, they gave you an answer sheet with all the right answers on it. You memorized all the answers in the order they're going to be given. And when they gave you the test again, what'd you do? You got an A on it because you just wrote down all, they cheated. Okay? They basically cheated the body. I would rather have my body react to COVID and find out how to fight it than for some multi-billion dollar company to fight it for me. Amen? And uh, it, you're not a quack. Of course, I will not be able to put this on YouTube now. That's all right. I don't care. But I won't be able to put this. I won't be able to put this on YouTube. Just, because, just for that very reason. They do not want anybody talking about COVID and COVID vaccines and stuff like that. They just don't want it. It just burns me up. Anyway. All right. To the scriptures we go. Thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect. And in thy book all my members were written, which in continuance were fashioned, 
when as yet there was none of them we notice that it mentions all the members of the human body and how in the book of DNA all the members are written out uh, mentions like a family all the members of a family are written out in fact that was that was how I introduced DNA to the people of Kenya. We were out in Kilimambogo, which is way out east of Nairobi. And um, I didn't want to insult everybody by thinking, well, they, these dumb people, they don't know anything about DNA. I didn't want to do that. didn't want to think they were dumb. So the translator, I was setting up my PowerPoint and I asked the translator, I said, what do these people know about DNA? And he said, DNA? I said, yeah, DNA. He said, you mean like how we identify who the father is? And I said, you got it. They know what America knows about DNA. <laughs> that's how you find, that's how Maury Povich finds out who the daddy is, <laughs> right? Okay? But that's, that's I mean, I, I did, I got tickled that he said that. But anyway, they know what DNA is. DNA writes out the members a family is a body, is it not? The family has a head, it has the body, uh, the wife, the children, and so on, which in continuance of fashion, when as yet there was none of them. We looked at this last week. It's packaged in 46 chromosomes, placed inside the cell nucleus. All the uh, chromosomes look like an X, except for what? Or Y chromosome. And who has Y chromosomes? Cubby has a Y chromosome. Amen, Cubby. And why does he have a Y chromosome? He's a man. Men have Y chromosomes. You can't deny that. You can fantasize in your head. You can get mad at everybody for misgendering you. Who cares you have a Y chromosome? Tell the truth. Amen. It's rolled in a helix form, twisted. The Bible word is crooked. Two spines or two legs made of sugar and phosphorus linked together by four compounds which are adenine, guanine, cytosine, thiamine. Well, so what you're looking at here you get Let's see here, let me get a marker here. What you're looking at here is the Old Testament. And over here would be the New Testament. And right in here are the Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And that's what brings everything together. And in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you have the Word. You have the word. In fact, how does the fourth gospel start out? In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God, and the word was made flesh. That's what that's what DNA is. DNA makes words into flesh. Amen. Isn't God isn't God smarter than the scientists? He is. He made it. So notice that, uh, let me give you these two rules here. Notice that adenine is always linked with thiamine. Notice that cytosine is always linked with guanine. So if the DNA double helix is pulled apart and you have one half of it going to a new cell how does the new cell know how to make the other side of it if it runs into guanine here it must be what here cytosine and if it's adenine here it must be thymine here because it follows rules okay? it follows these rules so there's a verse in the Bible, I'm getting ahead of my notes here, but there's a verse in the Bible that says, Seek ye out the book of the Lord and read it. No one of these shall fail, none shall want her mate. 
which means that if it's adenine, it's mated to thymine. If it's guanine, it's mated to cytosine and vice versa. So if it's thymine, it's adenine. If it's cytosine, it's guanine or guanine, it's cytosine. It's just, it's just like a, 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 a round peg and a round hole here, a square peg and a square hole here. And you can't mess them up. There's just no way you can mess them up. Uh, let's see here. In that sense, it's just like Morse code. For every letter and every number, there is a different set of dots and dashes. And that's basically the way that, um, that uh, DNA makes out the words that are our genes. So, let's see here. So let's say that this combination here, adenine to thymine, cytosine to guanine, thymine to adenine, those three codons joined together would make, let's say, the letter R in Morse, Morse code. It would make an amino acid, um, let's say it's the letter R, or let's say it's the letter B, okay? So if I wanted to spell out the B-I-B-L-E, then I would use three combinations of these base pairs together to spell out the word Bible, okay? So it's coded, uh, David's coded just like computers are. In fact, they now know how to use DNA to store massive volumes of information. They can arrange the thymine, the adenine, the guanine, the cytosine, they can arrange that in such an order is that it looks like the zeros and ones of computer code and literally on something the size of the head of a pen they can store tremendous amounts of data on teraflops explain how much a teraflop is How much? A thousand terabytes. I think that's I think that's about right. Just on the head of a pin. Yeah, terabytes a thousand gigabytes. A gigabyte is a thousand megabytes. A megabyte is a thousand kilobytes, and a kilobyte is a thousand bytes. Okay. Let's start. Yeah. And anyway, the letters that DNA make, amino acids, matches the exact amount of letters in the Hebrew alphabet. God wrote your DNA. And he wrote it and made it look exactly like your Bible. And he wrote it in a genetic language that matches the Hebrew Aleph Beth alphabet. It matches it perfectly with the number of amino acids. Amino acid is like a letter. And when you have certain amino acids together, that forms a word. And then you have a bunch of words together. And then you have what's called a stop codon and a start codon that tells uh, whatever's reading the DNA that to stop right here uh, we're done making spit and now from here on we're gonna make uh, snot instead of spit or earwax or we're gonna make sweat or we're gonna make uh, oil for your skin or we're gonna make some skin cells and it's all determined by um, by the coding of of the DNA uh, let's see here. So this is its basic structure. It looks like a ladder, but the ladder is twisted. Okay, that means it's closed. It's closed up, and while it's closed up, it cannot be read. Um, the fact that these legs here 
are made of phosphorus and sugar match Psalm 119. How sweet are thy words unto my taste, yea, sweeter than honey to my mouth. How did David know that DNA as a book if he were to eat it, would taste like honey. How did he know it was made of sugar? He didn't. God told him that. Psalm 119, 130. The entrance of thy words giveth light. It giveth understanding to the simple. How did David know, writing Psalm 119, that the very legs of DNA were made of phosphorus? Phosphorus is light. It's, a, it's a, um, an element that gives off light. It's, it's, why, it's how you can see tracer bullets at night. It's how people who are shooting at, at you can tell whether or not they're even close to the target is that every, what, every 15th, 20th round, something like that, is a tracer bullet and they can see it because it lights up because it was dipped in phosphorus. And it lights up just like, you remember the ladder that, that, that uh, Jacob saw? Remember that ladder? What did he, who did he see on the ladder? The angels of God ascending and descending on that ladder. That's the light. They were beings of light and they were ascending and descending on that ladder. Just like the ladders made of phosphorus. That's what they were doing. That's what they were acting out. Uh, it's rolled up like a scroll in Ezekiel chapter 2. When I was look, when I looked, behold, an hand was sent unto me, and lo, a roll of a book was therein. Uh, and, and remember, that's how the book was handed to Jesus. It was rolled up as a scroll. In Ezekiel 3.3, 3, And he said unto me, Son of man, cause thy belly to eat, and fill thy bowels with this roll that I give thee. Then did I eat it, and it was in my mouth as honey for sweetness. John, of course, did the same thing. And I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it up, and it was in my mouth sweet as honey. And as soon as I had eaten it, my belly was bitter. And he said, because you eat too much sugar, amen. <laughs> and he said unto me, thou must prophesy again before many peoples, and nations, tongues, and kings. He was eating the book that was given to him. It was like DNA. It tasted like sugar. It had light in it. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Because DNA is always lit up because it's made of phosphorus. Oh, I got to stop here. And this is a good place to stop too. Well, I'll, I'll read this. You know that one leg is the Old Testament, one leg is the New Testament. Um, I'll leave it at that. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book, if any man shall add unto the these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. Now, I heard some things um, a couple weeks ago and I'm I, I don't like sharing this kind of information because if you're wrong people go ah he got it wrong we know that scientists ability to alter the DNA of any creature now is easier than it ever has been and um, it's cheaper, it's easy, and we already have scientists that are altering the DNA of mosquitoes so that they can't carry malaria. We're uh, altering different plants genetically. Um, plants that they say are resistant to certain uh, bugs or certain diseases or whatever what you have is man rewriting a book that he doesn't fully understand it's kind of like you getting a new um, um, barbecue grill for Christmas but you have to put it together and the book 
was first written by a man who only knows Chinese. And then it was translated by a man who barely knows English. You ever done that before? So you have no idea how this thing is actually supposed to go together because you can't understand the book. All right? We can't understand the entirety of any species DNA and what it does. There's, there's things that we have DNA that nobody knows what it does. So they think it does nothing. They call it junk DNA. They say it's just there. It doesn't do anything. But what if they start messing with man's DNA and they are going to maybe as early as next year? What if they start messing with man's DNA and say, well, this won't harm you. It'll just, you won't catch this disease. You won't die of this. Uh, you'll be able to see better, so on and so on. What if they start messing with man's DNA? You're going to let them? God already said, if you add to this book, I'm going to add to you the plagues. If you take away from this book, I'm going to take your name out of the book of life. God's that serious. I would rather die of the disease than die and go to hell. Diseases are temporary. Hell's permanent. God's telling you, don't let them change your DNA. Father, we ask your blessings on your word. We thank you for it. Uh, open up our eyes. Show us great and mighty things which we know not. We thank you, God, for the book of life that is in us. And our name is written in that book. And we thank you, God, that we live in a time such as this. Lord, help us, dear God, to shine a light in a very dark world. We ask your blessings in Jesus' name. And amen.